to we could give it give it a few seconds just to invite people in if they want to be here. Uh, but thank you for being here for an episode of the Blue House. Have you watched any of the episodes of the Blue House? Um, yes. Which I, one you watch? I watched a one when I don't remember the name, but um, my boy was here and he was in this nice um, thing of suit. I it, um. Uh, I forget what the episode He could be so mad because you call him your boy, but you don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Who he is? Mr. 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 Yubi. Former Mr. Yubi. Oh, former Mr. Yubi. You mean Jermaine James? Jermaine, yeah. Alright. That's one of the first episodes. Yeah. That's actually the only episode yes. that he was in. Yes. Alright. Congratulations. You watched one of the first episodes. That's respectable. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, those who are logging in, my name is Rambert Monomo. I'm in the Creative Media Services and Fine Engagement Department, one of the longest named departments at the University of Bahamas. And we are here with the captain of the men's basketball team, Mr. Theodore Grant himself, who will be known as Theo in this interview. I will not call you by your government name. No one does. Because I know how to feel. Yeah, no one so, does. you call me Grant, I call you Theo. Theo, how are you feeling today, man? Feeling good, man. Um, awesome. Awesome to be here. So, like I said, I'm going to make a funny. Um, meme to this but i'm going to put as the like the cover for the for the episode mm -hmm. you and like the fishing gone fishing outfit that the nba is too because you're all officially out the playoffs bro uh mm -hmm. tell 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 me about your mindset how do you feel being out the playoffs no more practice every morning um i mean it's not mandatory that we don't want practice and what's not, but i still still my little one two here in the mornings so i still have my fault um, work over Sasha provided for us, um, but it's kind of tough being able to play off, not being around on um, basketball, playing in a more of a challenging um, atmosphere, I would say. So it's kind of tough. Um, I wish, obviously, wish we were still in the playoffs, but now it gives us more time to focus on um, what we can do better for next time, next semester. Right. So you've been here for a while. I actually saw your status today. Not to say I'm a creep, but I pay attention. Oh, yeah. You post a very old picture of you, man. Oh, Hi, head 20, high, 20. Yeah, number 20. Uh, 21. Thinner, 20, oh, sorry, yeah. so Sorry, number 21. Yeah. Uh, thinner, Theo, athletic. But that was the days of benching, actually, for oh, you. Oh, yeah, right? it was. Yeah, um, you, tell, tell me about your mindset, why you post that and... Let the um, people know about your start at the program, in the UB program. Um, yeah, um, I posted that. I was looking back into my gallery and I noticed so I still have these pictures. Um, and not me thinking my first day is here. I came here in COVID. Mm -hmm. That's when we used to practice on the hard court, straight out there by the gym. Mm -hmm. um, true story, I lost about four pair of sneakers on that court. So wow. When dudes come, when the new dudes come, not these new ones, not yeah. the purple and pink with the blue <laughs> no, that no, you went. Not those ones. These pretty new. Yeah. Like boy, you have a lot of money for shoes, yeah. boy. No man, they cheap. They come with a. Um, Don't tell people your secret. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, um, you know when dudes complain about oh the gym cold or the gym, I'm floor slippery. I used to be like, bro, you know uh, when I came here, we was outside. We didn't have no court. Um, water was on the court after the rain, but we still practicing. Right. And going hard against dudes like UJ and trying to keep up with dudes like Chris, like who have energy and you know, used to this. So, um, looking back, it brought back it brought back a lot of good memories um, of where I started from, how how I evolved in the UB culture. Also, I posted looking back, and it 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 gave me motivation to get back in size. Also, so right, right. I, that's what I want to do with, um, in, in this off season. Um, to get back to that side. So you spoke about um, names that shall not be named no more. I ain't gonna lie, I saw Donovan the other day and um, I gave him the finger, yeah. these two fingers. Um, and then I also see UJ, I saw Rashad, you know, I, I tell him I disappointed in them. Like, if anything, y'all should have, like, forfeit. Y'all should have feel, like, disgraced of the play UB, man. Yeah. But Brian Mo was hard. I wish y'all would beat them. Brian was just like, yeah, that's what they get. And, and, the, and the thing is, I have to see him every day. I bite my nail on that for dramatic effect. Because Brian was a bencher. Let me look in the camera. Brian was a bencher. Brian needed to stop acting like he was a starter. Brian used to come in, get three rebounds, and then head back on the bench. You were, and still are, the Rodman of the Mingos program. And I'm proud of you. But stop acting like you can shoot and dribble. You're one-handed. Anyway, but uh, it was a lot of memories there. Uh, we had the TN, TMT Giants with yeah. UJ. We had Donovan there. 
we had Lefty, Daniel Hall, Rashad. Rashad did a disrespectful block. I ain't gonna lie, I thought y'all should have started a fight. It's not sportsmanship, it's about respect. But the way we blocked that ball, it was like yeah. swat, and then he looked like he could have catch it. He, yeah. He just it, had to put emphasis on blocking. It's like a volleyball, yeah. how we treated that. But uh, it literally was minus, I guess, Kimsey. It was going against the former UVTM. Yeah. Talk about uh, the playoff experience with people who know you all, players. Uh, yeah. Um, going into the game, we had a set plan that we would um, do players, um, learn plays, and uh, try to, um, I would say, maneuver them with mm -hmm. the new players. All right. um, but dudes, dudes more experienced and the team that we have now, um, after once or twice, they get to read the players and what's not, they get telegraphed and what's not. And we have some young dudes on our team um, who, who would give in to the trap. UJ is a really great defender and small off the ball, smart defender. And things like that, he, he pick up easy on. Mm -hmm. So my challenge was getting I, oh, you gotta, I, I can give UJ some respect. Yeah, give me them. UJ is somebody, and I talked about you starting on the bench for a while, right? Um, one thing about this program is Barkas Bar Bar believes in leadership and auto. You know, um, even sometimes he's around me. When I put a freshman on the fly, he's really taking him off. Because it's about auto. You know, on the trip, they got to carry the cool off. Yeah. They got to carry the bikes. And I think that's a lot about collegiate auto and, and structure and leadership, especially for young men. So UJ is somebody who I respect because UJ benched hard, yes. but he was the loudest cheerleader. Yes. Like yes. real, like leader of cheering. UJ, you need defense, he defense, and, and then... He's a workout. When he, when, when, what it was, Kimsey, Shakes, and Justin graduated, and UJ took over, it was like transformation. All of a sudden, he had in three years, yeah. he making plays, he was um, in the playoffs for the All-Stars. So I mean, like, shout-outs to UJ, definitely a baller. Um, came from Kingsway, didn't even know Kingsway had ballers. There it is, Trochet, because I am here. Um, so you in that same position, and then you got to watch UJ, but, but you got a piece of Kim Z, no, 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 no I didn't. But the Kim Z at Amaro was crazy. And there was one game, Q cost it, and Q steal the ball from Kim Z and then down Kim. Oh, yeah. And then Kim Z just went wild. Oh, no, I have all the highlights. I, I love that I, game. I hate that game. I stopped recording y'all. I know. I, I literally said, I, I thought I was recording Kim Z again. He did a Ali you. Kim Z, I will not stop <laughs> until that picture on through the hall is down. What, what he did, Ali you, he did a off the backboard dunk. He did a windmill. <laughs> He literally passed it from beyond half court. Let me finish. He beyond half court. This boy flick it like volleyball. The next guy bunks it. It bunks off the rim. Kim D catch it. Look at cute. And then he dunk. So I just trying to say. <laughs> so um yeah, that was a crazy era, man. Uh, but I think the program is growing. Um, a, a big pivot this semester. Maybe you could talk about it. I want to get you in a long time to talk about this. Was the shortening of the team? Do you feel? Cutting the team was bad or worse for y'all? Um, it was... The second cut, actually, you should call it. <laughs> you mean um, how the players um, fall off? Well, yeah, it's two cuts. It's one cut where a lot of guys on the bench. Because I don't know if you ever, you ever look at your stats. Yeah. I know, you tell me you didn't. No, actually, I, why don't you look I, at stats? I'm not a... I don't chase stats. I, right. I just play the game for the game's sake. Um, I don't believe in looking at stats. Mm -hmm. um, my coach normally, Coach um, Johnson, mm -hmm. normally would tell me I, what I need to improve on. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't look at stats. I'm not a star chaser. I'm, I don't worry about how much points I have. I don't worry about steals. I don't worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. I just worry about winning, basically. How much you think you had for the whole um, season, points per game, average points per game? Per game? I, I, I honestly I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? No. All right, we can do that alone. <laughs> uh, points per game. Let's see. Theodore Grant and then it's... Uh, so basically nine, because you know it's two T grants. I don't know which one is yours and which oh, one yeah, is. Okay. Actually, I can tell if I look at the score. <laughs> no, the assists, because you get more assists. Uh, so yours is 9.8. You actually had a higher point um, per game than Tim when he was here. So you have 9.8 per game. Uh, All together, you scored over 150 points. That's 157. Average uh, assists per game was 4.5. Um, in total, you have 72 assists. Um, average offensive rebound was one. Defensive rebound was four altogether. You had 5.7 rebounds. Uh, 91 rebounds in total for you. 
um, blocks. You had you had one block. <laughs> Uh, you had steals, 11 in total for the season, 0.8% overall. Um, and then attendance of games, you know, it's 16 games. You attended all 16. You never missed a game. Minutes per game, you had 33.1. So you're basically paying three quarters every game. Uh, field goal percentage uh, basically was low, 2.9. Uh, three point was higher, well, no, closer, 21%. And then uh, in the paint, two point percentage was 33.9. But overall, one of the highest free throws, no, no, third, fourth. You have the fifth highest on the team. Well, tied for fifth with, oh, Gabriel for three uh, free throws percentage for 60%. So um, that's your stat. You never looked at it all season, 16 games down, including international. But I ain't feel bad about it. Like I told you before we started this, I feel like you're the Jason kid. Um, and I say that respectfully because I don't know you you watch basketball. Yeah. So Jason Kidd was known for what assists and a little bit of steals. But I don't know if you watch his like ending games before he like became a coach at the Brooklyn Nets. He was shooting, bro. And people don't look at it, and you can look at this for yourself. He actually had a great three point percentage shot, similar to Chris Paul. Yeah. You lead them open, they get hit a three. It's just yeah. they don't do it because they, they share the ball. Yeah. And then uh, of course it's that one game when you prove you're a shooter. Well, that you know as a commentator I. I admit you shoot a little good. That's why the joke will continue. I need to find a picture of your mother to make a cutout. I have gotten permission from the NX department. We're going to cut out a picture, a actual staple next to the mascot of your mother. Every game that will be there. So you will have no more excuses. The game his mother was there. I think you scored, what, 27 or 30 or something like that? Okay. Pretty high. Anyway, so we talking about stats. It's the boring part, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't watch basketball, you don't gonna like it. That's your business. Welcome to UB Athletics. So stats-wise, this is the amazing thing I did. Me and Sean was running over it. And we can't post this because we don't want to interfere with international competition. You know, teams looking at us. But just for this discussion, there's a major difference between the average things that the bench does and the average teams. Then. And I use the starting five to be those people who make it on the flyer. So I just highlighted the people who always on the flyer or who I know I put on the flyer. And it's a major difference. You look at points per game. The bench only, if you put the whole team, 69%. If you just do the starters, 107. It's 40 more points just if y'all just play. You look at average minutes per game. If you do the whole team, 15. If you do just the bench, you go up to 28. Well, 23, sorry. You know, uh, three-point percentage is kind of close. The big difference is in the free throws. The bench, 37%. Yeah, if you do the starters, everybody at 50%. So I just found those were some, like, Amazing things. The funnier thing is, if you do the average game that is a 10 by the team, you go down to nine games. But if you go for the starters, it's 13. So there's a reason why all the starters, play. like, y'all really uh, make a difference on the team. Y'all contribute. If you look at, um, like I said, points per game, the bench contributed 69, but the starters contributed 107. So it's like a crazy difference between the starting six, I would say, or seven. Because it's Q, U, you got to include Tim in there because he was there. Uh, Glenn Glenn, Glenn, uh, Kamari, Jamaico. So you got like eight, nine people, but that's the team. And the funny part is, like, when y'all go international, that's why y'all is up anyway. So, I mean, what, what do you feel with the reality being that it is only nine people carrying the team? But sadly, for reasons we won't disclose, the nine can't always play. Uh, what do you think could happen to, and of course it's the coach call, but from your perspective as a captain, what could happen to move the team forward? Um, I would say we need to get um, everybody on, not, not say on par, but on, at a level that, hey, it won't hurt if we put this person in. It won't hurt us. Uh, we put these two pairs in it. it. We need to have a system in place that, um, okay, we get um, two players, two two lead players who could outshine the, um, I would say, the bench players if they're on the court mm -hmm. to level it off. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't make, it wouldn't um, hurt us. The, the, the positives that comes from the Starting the role, the role players, the starting players could shine the role players. I believe that would um, help us in the long run, also. Um, especially because, like you said, we only have probably seven um, 
starters or seven players that we can count on mm -hmm. to to um, facilitate and put on put numbers up. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say we need a system in place that could that we could bring in more players that could contribute a little, even if it's just playing defense. Yeah. Even if it, even no, if it's just the difference. Uh, I showed. Coach LeVar Johnson brought this up many times. The difference between a win game and a lose game for y'all is li literally be if y'all could get the 50 by the second quarter. If y'all get the 50 by the second quarter, this is a good game. Whenever y'all, like, at that 30 mark, 20 mark at the second, you know, it's just a game over. Y'all could play hard in the last couple of minutes and bring the score back, but the game over. And that's literally where the game is made in the beginning of, which is weird because you think the team would be tired at the end. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been kind of hard as a fan watching you play, but at the same time as a fan, you guys make me like so proud when you actually play. Like um, shout outs to Donato, you know, like he's working hard, and I watch him personally do this. That's so why I can brag about it. He ran to the game. He's a little late, obviously. He have his personal things he's yeah. doing. Comes there, does two stretches outside, goes on the court, puts up twenty two points, and that reminds me of the spirit of Kimsey. Kimsey was a person like that. Kimsey worked like four jobs but never miss a game, never miss a practice. So, I mean, like, the spirit of the Mingo is there with y'all. I feel like y'all doing it. Um, it's just, like, it comes down to basics. If everybody hits their shot, like, you're looking at under 50% chance. So, either y'all make it or y'all don't, but the sad part is the next game isn't it? Yeah. You know? So, so that's um some ba basketball stats. Let's learn about Theo Grant, man. How, how was your transition as a Family Island student to Nassau? I mean, well, growing up in the family island, in Tenazzo. Uh, it's well, Grand Bahama County is a family island. Yes, it does. All right, it does. <laughs> well, I'll see. It's family island. Anyway, um, notice um, I say Grand Bahama, not Freeport West End. Uh, see, I respect uh, you. Come yeah, on, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, transitioning to Nassau, it's kind of fast pace. Being on ground, coming from Grand Bahama is very slow and steady, you know. But it's more of a fast pace over here. A lot of cars, a lot of vehicles, a lot of traffic, a lot of one ways. That doesn't make sense. I don't. I don't feel that doesn't really make sense. But yeah. Right. Um, but I, I. I did all right. I, I did fine. Um, I'm still a homebody person. Like I grew did up. Did you like decide to miss home in the first two weeks? Though? Yes, I did. Like you was calling on like, my grandma. Bro, like, like I don't want to be here, bro. Like, <laughs> you know? but, but um, I got over it. I got over it. Got used. Um, made friends. Right. right. Made brothers. Um, joining a lot of organizations, elbowed in my community, um, made a lot of friends, like I said, I made a yeah. lot of friends. And leadership role, I mean, you don't yeah. got to shy away from it. President of um, the Sigmas, uh, I think you're involved in RHA too. Yeah. And you came out to your own body. Uh, we did an after party at F2K, and shout yes. out to you and the basketball players for coming. You know, that's that's something, again, the spread of mangoes are missing. Yeah, we try to support everything. Um, that you be on on the whole um, try um throws, so we try to be there every event, um, everything that we could be do possibly. We try to even though we have some busy schedules, like a lot of dudes work on a team, a lot of dudes have to work to support themselves. Some some support their families also while being in college. So I I have to give a shout out to them. I'm still trying to participate in sports and stuff and living their life. So. I have, I have a lot of hard workers out there, especially on every team. I will shout out every team. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard workers, a lot of things we go through. And I, I frequently have a conversation with Ms. Card, right? And she still to this day don't believe how athletes does do it. Right. So right. um so I wanna shout out all our athletes at U B um you're doing a good job and keep it up. Good man, good fine service. What about uh let's talk about heritage, right? Or uh, numbers. Do you think the numbers are very important for the Mingo team? Like, when you wear a particular number, you feel like you carry a little bit of the weight of the previous person? Superstition. Superstition. Because no. they say the number 11, this, I look straight in the camera for this. Number 11 for the Mingo team in every color, black, gray, blue, disappeared. has yeah. disappeared. Shakes. And we don't know where it went. That ain't funny. Like I came here for the 11. You came here for the 11? I came here for the 11. Wow. All right. 11 or... I would say 14, we don't have 14. But those, those are two numbers I came for. Um, but to get back to your original question, um, 
Uh, not really. I switched to 24 because I was asked to. That's it. No, that was only it. I, if it was me up to me, I would have to keep 21. I, I believe in I believe in you making your legacy in the number. Right, not, right. Not passing on a, a previous legacy. Um, I don't look at 23 and think of... Um, Who is 23 on? now? Huh? Who is 23 now? Uh, no one. It's faking. You know, that's a reason. But it's it was amazing. O- it was occupied. But the two numbers, that he in Kimsey number and yeah, Shake's it, number. It was occupied, but... Uh, it's just funny. Yeah. But, just, like I was saying, um, yeah, I don't, I don't look at 23 and look at um, LeBron. I don't look at 23 and look at Jordan. I look at 23 as a number that I could make. Theodore but if you want to take Kim Z Sport in the hallway, you have to wear the number 23. I don't have to. Yeah, like, you know that it is for him to walk past and see that picture with you standing up? And he got to look twice and didn't realize it's better seeing me. No, imagine him looking at Chris' number and saying, bro, like... A 20, well, you know... 24. You prove you prove you deserve to wear twenty four. You can shoot a three. Uh you have a I mean, respect to your shot. It's a nice arch. It floats in the air. You wasted the last four seconds in the final season just shooting the three. But that was a playoff game or it was something where your but your ball stayed in the air long, bro. It's like three, two, one. Hey, that was like but you have a four second arch, bro. Like you could run the clock with that, bro. Yeah, um, I'm small, so yeah. I have to get the ball up over a lot of tall little defenders, and I I learned that from high school. Mm-hmm. I, I I had a shooting coach, a shooting coach, that helped me with that. Now uh, it's just a mental thing with shooting now for me. Yeah. So hopefully I'll get over it. And you, I be get shooting, over. you be shooting from the four point line though. You know, yeah, somebody. because. That's the Steph Curry influence. Man. No, no, you know, no. Let, let that go on record that I don't watch Steph Curry. I don't watch. I don't watch college. I don't watch um NBA basketball. NBA basketball. I watch college basketball. You know where they could travel and take yeah, many. I sense. don't watch NBA basketball. I watch college basketball a lot. Right. Um, but I I was never a three point shooter. I was more always a mid range, on um, mid range type of shooter. That was like a layup to me. Still is. I don't take a lot, but because my game has to advance to get with the morning times so I started to practice a lot of shots and it's just I have the strength to shoot from that distance mm-hmm. and the accuracy is on so why you not? have the discipline bro I don't know if you realize it the difference between your mom game and every other game is you came to the gym an hour and a half it's two games you came to the gym super early your mom game when she was there and homecoming you was in the gym first I actually think I have footage I recorded you doing that I normally do come to games early if I don't have any other um, so do. things to do. So I believe in time management and time value. Like if you early early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. That sounds like something. No, no, it, Lou it, would say. No. I mean the mascot. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I believe in that. That's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I stand by. Um, so I try to be early for for everything. Um, so those times you saw me into the gym, mm-hmm. it was, I didn't have anything to do. I, I planned my day out and I had extra time. So I said, let me come in, put in extra work, even though I had practice that morning, right. put in some extra workouts and once a month. So, so uh, as we wrap up, because I don't take too much of your day, I think you're on an uh, exam period now yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, I must be in a student. Um, so final words. Uh, What's next for you, man? Uh, you, what's your sophomore or senior now? I'm a senior, right, Greg? Senior. Tell us about your program. What what future plans do you have for yourself? I am a physical education major. I'm, I'm a senior, like I said. I will be graduating, hopefully, 2025 spring. I'll be on TV and graduating. Um, my plans are to maneuver into the government, sy- the government system and become a physical education teacher and coach, um, not only coaching basketball, but every sport. I'm trying to connect with students on a personal level um, and showing them that sports can help them with education or education can help them with sports, vice versa. Um, and they have to, in order to be an athlete, you have to be a student first. Um, I, I would preach that and try to make a difference by doing that. Uh, next thing, any pressure to be great? I mean, you had Justin Smith going back to Grand Bahama along with Shakes, and they did this program in COVID for young people. They're doing the buddy heel uh, camps and these former players. you have any aspirations of doing anything for the community? Um, yeah, um, Shakes uh, is 
more of a role model to me and I look at everything he do and I hold it at a high, a high standard. So um, it, gives, it gives me inspiration to go back home or go to any island or anywhere and try to make a difference, like how, no matter how small it is, um, like how Shakes is doing. Um, mm. And I, my goal is to bring it on a larger scale. Good, good. We have a few people logged in. Thank you all for logging in. We have uh, Garcia Sims. We have Anointed Child. I don't know if you know any of these names. Ashford Ferguson, Eureka Boleg, DM Peace, Dime Peace, uh, Gio, Tonya Barr. I need none of these ringing the bell. Sonia Miller. You have Camp 242 Young Bahamians, Allen. Well, none of them ringing the bell, but we have a lot of people logged on today. Thank you guys so much for logging on for this pre-recording of our Blue House episode, which will be on YouTube in the next hour. But thank you all so much. Do not forget that tonight we have volleyball and yes. that playoffs game. Go out and support. Uh, volleyball games are looking like top contenders, but they have to go against the top team, which is the Panthers, in the first round. If they are able to beat this team, you can bet your money that our 